Hey guys, how's it going? LA here. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to install Kali Linux onto Proxmox. So before we get started, you'll need to have Proxmox installed on the server. Uh, in this video, I have Proxmox installed on a Dell PowerEdge server. And I go through the tutorial of how to install Proxmox uh, in a previous video of mine. You'll also need to have a version of Kali Linux downloaded onto your computer. You can get that by going to Kali.org. Uh, this is Kali Linux official website and you can download a distro of uh, Linux here. Uh, the one that I'll be using is the 64-bit version and you can click on the HTTP or the torrent link if you prefer uh, to download by torrent. Alright so since I already have Proxmox installed on my server and I already have Kali Linux downloaded onto my computer I'm gonna go ahead and get started here first thing we want to do is we want to upload our Kali Linux ISO onto our local hard drive. So navigate to your local hard drive from Proxmox, which is going to be the local Prox, and click on Upload. Ensure that ISO image is selected and click on Select File and navigate to the ISO file. Uh, double click that, hit Upload, and you'll see the upload progress. Um, as your ISO image uploads onto the uh, local hard drive. Now I already have Kali Linux uploaded here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on create VM in the upper right corner of the screen. And we're in the create a virtual machine uh, wizard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this virtual machine Kali Linux. And I'll remove the space in between. And we'll click on next. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load the ISO file onto the virtual CD disk drive. And I'm going to click on next. Alright, so in the hard drive section, one of the things we want to do is we want to make sure that our disk size is greater than 20 gigs. Uh, 20 gigs is the minimum requirement for Kali Linux and we're good to go with 32 gigs. With that being set, I'm going to go ahead and click on Next. So in the CPU section here, I'm going to bump my cores up to 2 and I'll click on Next. In the memory section, uh, we see that the default is set to 512. The memory requirement for Kali Linux is 1 gig. But I'm going to go ahead and give Kali Linux 2 gigs and we're going to click on next. So in the network section uh, we see that the interface is set to the default uh, virtual machine bridge. I'm going to leave that as it is and I'm going to click on next. So now we're here at the final screen. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on finish to confirm and create the VM. As you can see on the left side of the screen a VM with Kali Linux was just created. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and start the VM. You do that two ways. You can actually right click on the VM itself and click on start or you can click on the start button here in the uh, right side of the page. If we look to the left we can see now that our uh, icon has changed from a dull grayed out to a solid black monitor with a green arrow which means it's currently on. So now that our virtual machine is on I'm going to go ahead and console into that virtual machine by clicking on console. This opens up a separate window in which we can look at the uh, GUI interface of the virtual machine. So at this point we want to go ahead and go to graphical install. Alright so now that we're in the installation wizard it's given us an option to choose our language. I'm going to choose English and I'm going to click on continue. My region is going to be set to the United States and I'm going to click on continue. American English is the keyboard set Alright, so in this section you can configure the host name. For the host name, I'm actually going to change this to Kali. 
and I'm going to click on continue. So in this next section, the domain name, I'm going to go ahead and delete the default that's provided there, which was provided by my um, modem router setup. And I'm going to leave that blank and click on continue. In this section, we're setting up a uh, password. I'm going to choose a very simple password here. And I'm going to click on continue. My time zone is Eastern, and that's selected. So I'm going to click on continue. In this section, I'm going to go ahead and click on the guided use entire disk method. It's much more easy and streamlined. However, if you want to get a little bit more granular with how you partition your disk, you can click on manual or any of the other options. This is the disk that we're using, the virtual uh, hard disk. Now in this section here, you're given different options for partitioning your directories. You can have your home directory in a separate partition as well as uh, an option for your home and other directories in a separate partition. However, I'm going to choose to have everything in one partition and I'm going to hit continue. This is a confirmation screen. We're going to click on finish and continue. Go ahead and click on yes and continue. In this next part of the installation where it's asking you to choose whether or not you would like to use a network mirror, go ahead and choose yes. Choosing yes will allow you to download applications and updates from the Calinux repository. If you're using a proxy, you can enter your proxy information here. If not, click on continue. In this part of the installation, it's asking if you would like to install the Grub bootloader. Go ahead and choose yes and continue. In this part, we're going to choose our hard drive and we're going to click on continue. Alright, so as we can see now, the installation is complete. Go ahead and, go ahead and click on continue. Alright, so Cal Linux is loaded up. I'm going to go ahead and put in the username, which is root. And the password was the password that we created during the installation phase. All right, guys. So as you can see, Cal Linux is fully loaded onto uh, our Proxmox virtual machine here. Uh, one of the things that we want to do before we uh, continue on is we'll want to go to the VM itself and into the hardware section. And we're going to want to remove the, not the CD drive itself, but we're going to remove the ISO image. So we'll choose the do not use any media option and click on OK. This is going to clear up our CD drive. All right, guys. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave your questions in the comment section. Thank you all for watching my video and don't forget to subscribe.